Quantum theory is the most successful theory explaining reality and assaults our intuitions of how reality should be. But in quantum world, all subatomic particles are a great tiny magician. As particles that also act like waves, the spooky action at a distance like entanglement, it seemed to flit about an atom without tracing a particular path, dead and alive cat-like superposition, and it also might stay at many places in the same time, etc. Among this, the best and most weird magic what subatomic particles do is spin. The spinning never appears to slow or speed up. It always looks like it's spinning at exactly the same speed. It even has a little magnetic field, just like a spinning object with electric charge. And when the best magician electron does this magic, then it becomes the weirdest reality among everything. Physics is trying to solve this puzzle since last hundred years. Because our understanding is telling that subatomic particle cannot rotate or spin, or quantum spin is not possible. On the other hand, without the weird spin rotation rule, we would not have chemistry. If electrons don't seem to spin, everything in this universe will collapse down to a minuscule fraction of its size. All the electrons in any element would just pile into the lowest energy state and there'd be little difference between them. The existence of the complex molecules that makes us and everything around us will not be possible without spin. Because different atoms in periodic table can be only possible by quantum mechanical spin of the electron. So, spin isn't just one of the best tricks that subatomic particles do, but it's also one of the most crucial property required to create present universe. Most important thing is our quantum understanding will break down without spin. Because spin number is an identity of each subatomic particle, which makes difference between particle to particle, or we can say electron is electron due to its spin number. In this video, I dedicatedly explained what a quantum spin is. So please share, like and subscribe because your support is my inspiration. Discovery of quantum physics in mid-1920 changed our thinking about the nature of the physical world science, which was continued since the day of Isaac Newton. The main basic thing of this micro-world discovery was the electron and the proton are matter particles which carry the elementary charge and neutron which is neutral. The idea of an elementary matter particle combines the idea of a charge and its motion and therefore accounts for both the particle as well as the wave-like character of matter particles. Schrodinger found an oscillatory motion when analyzing Dirac's wave equation for an electron in free space in 1927. This oscillatory motion is the same, Sitter Bewegung. While Dirac immediately grasped the significance of Schrodinger's discovery, it is found that an electron which seems to us to be moving slowly must actually have a very high frequency oscillatory motion of small amplitude superposed on the regular motion which appears to us. As a result of this oscillatory motion, the velocity of the electron at any time equals the velocity of light. 
This is a prediction which cannot be directly verified by experiment, since the frequency of the oscillatory motion is so high and its amplitude is so small. But all this discovery is going to invent the most important property to distinguish all point-like subatomic particle called spin. In this video, we will discuss about spin of subatomic particle in detail. What exactly is the spin of subatomic particles such as electrons and quarks? Does it have any physical significance like the spin of a planet? Scientists told it is an intrinsic property of all subatomic particles. And the spin became one of the key criteria used to classify particles into two main groups, fermions and bosons. Let's analyze some detail about spin in historical background. In the 1920s, Otto Stern and Walter Gerlach of the University of Hamburg in Germany conducted a series of important atomic beam experiments. They knew from the experiment that all moving charges produce magnetic fields. So, they proposed to measure the magnetic fields produced by the electrons orbiting nuclei in atoms. But, the two physicists found that electrons themselves act as if they are spinning very rapidly, producing tiny magnetic fields independent of those from their orbital motions. Soon, the terminology spin was used to describe this apparent rotation of subatomic particles. But the paradox is, if the subatomic substances are spinning like the spin what the planet do or any physical substance do, then the surfaces of charged particles would have to be moving faster than the speed of light in order to produce the magnetic moments what we measured from the same particle. Another thing is, by calculations, if electrons spin, then they should be larger than the size of the entire atom. But, electrons are actually a minute part of atoms. A point particle which have no extension in space at all, no volume, how can a point particle have an axis about which it spins? This seems a self-contradictory concept. And as per a quantum mechanics rule, spin can quantized, meaning that only certain discrete spins are allowed, which creates all sorts of complications that make spin one of the more challenging aspects of quantum mechanics. But spin is an essential property for ions and neutri in atoms and molecules, which gives great physical significance in chemistry and solid state physics. So, for easy understanding, we can say spin is the total angular momentum or intrinsic angular momentum of a body. Intrinsic property? It is always difficult for an undergraduate student to accept that spin is an intrinsic property, rather than we experience spin as a circular motion. Okay, let us make our understanding easier about quantum spin. The spins of elementary particles are analogous to the spins of macroscopic bodies. Means, the spin of a planet is the sum of the spins and the orbital angular momenta of all its elementary particles. Or, we can say the spins of other composite objects such as atoms, atomic nuclei, and protons which are made up of quarks are the total spin of quarks in which it is made up of. In classical physics, angular momentum is a continuous variable. In quantum mechanics, angular momenta are discrete quantized in units of Planck's constant divided by 4 pi. 
We know Maxwell's laws of electromagnetism tells us that a spinning electrical charge creates a magnetic field. And we found by experiment that certain elementary particles, when moved through a magnetic field, they are deflected in a manner that suggests they have the properties of little magnets. In the classical world, a charged spinning object has magnetic properties that are very much like those exhibited by these elementary particles. Physicists love analogies. They postulated that it's moving and possibly spinning. So they describe the elementary particles in terms of their spin. Unfortunately, the analogy breaks down and realize that it is misleading to the electron as a small spinning object. Let us understand why. If you know how the charge is distributed in an object and you know how fast that object is spinning, you can figure out how strong the magnetic field is. Or, in general, more charge and more speed means more magnetism. Happily, you can also back solve. For a given size, magnetic field and electric charge, you can figure out the minimum speed that something must be spinning. Herein lies the problem. For the charge and size of electrons in particular, their magnetic field is way too high. The magnetic momentum that an electron possesses to achieve the same, it needs to be spinning million times faster than the speed of light, which physics doesn't allow. On the other hand, they definitely have the angular momentum necessary to create their fields. Electrons do each have a magnetic field called the magnetic moment, as do protons and neutrons. It seems strange to abandon the idea of rotation when talking about angular momentum. Another paradox is, it is necessary that electrons and protons should be solid objects or only solid objects which can rotate in space. For the same, physicists still not able to develop a visualization of physical reality that quantum particles actually spin. But, they are able to describe spin mathematically and predict its behavior in lab experiments. They are predicting it is the magnetic properties of quantum particles, not the rotational motion. Or we can say, the key to understanding spin is to realize that whatever it really is, its physical manifestation is magnetism. That is, spin is not due to an external force which sets a particle spinning, nor does it appear due to actual physical motion of the particle. Particle seems to be born with spin as an inherent property like the mass or electric charge of a quantum object. Thus, spin is sometimes called inherent or intrinsic angular momentum. It may very well be that intrinsic spin is actually more fundamental than the form of rotation we are used to. Let us understand how spin is applicable in recognizing quantum particles. As physicists don't know the physical meaning of spin, the spin numbers are most accurately described that fit the equations that have been found to describe the behavior of particles in lab experiments. On that condition, fundamental particles have been assigned different spin numbers, such as zero, half, one, two, and so on. And it is assigned only to fundamental particles. The spin of composite particles like protons and neutrons is even more complex. As per spin, two families of particles obey different laws and broadly have different rules in the world around us. 
They are fermions or mass particles and bosons as force carrying particles. Elementary fermions with other spins, that is 3 by 2, 5 by 2, etc., are not known to exist, only be a theoretical presence. Bosons obey the rules of Bose Einstein statistics and have no such restriction, so they may bunch together in identical states. Also, composite particles can have spins different from their component particles. For example, a helium-4 atom in the ground state has spin zero and behaves like a boson, even though the quarks and electrons which make it up are all fermions. Elementary particles which are thought of as carrying forces are all bosons with spin one. They include the photon which carries the electromagnetic force, the gluon, strong force, and the W and Z bosons or weak force. The ability of bosons to occupy the same quantum state is used in the laser, which aligns many photons having the same quantum number, the same direction and frequency. Superfluid liquid helium resulting from helium-4 atoms being bosons and superconductivity where pairs of electrons, which individually are fermions, act as single composite bosons. Higgs boson is believed not to spin. It has spin zero. It is the first scalar elementary particle which has been zero known to exist in nature. Similar to fermions, elementary bosons with other spins like 2, 3, etc. were not historically known to exist, although they have received considerable theoretical treatment and are well established within their respective mainstream theories. In particular, theoreticians have proposed the graviton predicted to exist by some quantum gravity theories would spin too. Atomic nuclei have nuclear spin which may be either half integer or integer so that the nuclei may be either fermions or bosons. The basic concept is fermions cannot be in the same state as other fermions. This leads to the solidness of ordinary matter, while bosons can, for which light can pass through itself. Today, we are literally depending on computers and smartphones which uses the science called quantum physics, which remains an enigma. In fact, the science in quantum physics is so strange that once Richard Feynman could, I can safely say that no one understands quantum mechanics. But why is it so different from what we are used to in our day-to-day -day life and why is it continuously surprising us? Democritus once said, in reality we know nothing for the truth is in the depths. That may vary well with the case, but we can keep trying and that is what matters. In upcoming episode, I'll come with another unexplained theory of reality. Till then, bye.